All right. Well, we got a new topic. We dabbled in a little bit a few months ago, a few episodes ago, but now here we are. And Liz took the plunge to become a health and wellness certified coach. And after talking with her a few times, I've started to um, the program myself. So we thought, let's put our money where our mouth is and yeah. really work on health and wellness if it's as important as professional life and everything going else going on. So Liz, why don't you open it up today? What prompted this for you? Um, I've always had a kind of complicated relationship with um, certainly exercise, um, that concept of self-care. Um, I think that where I started initially was this sense of women putting ourselves last and being told that, that what is important for us is at the bottom of a list. Um, that, so that was, I think the starting position is that I wanted to have another set of tools to help, but my, my clients are primarily women to help my clients um, sort through their priorities and put together um, inspired ideas of what they would like to be different if they were to put themselves first in some ways um, and some actionable goals around that, that was my starting position. But then we're in a pandemic <laughs> and I found myself really struggling to, even if I have the time, it's not like I've been without time, but without the motivation to focus on my health and to make healthy choices, um, even to just move my body you know, and so I've actually found that this program has been um, pretty transformational for me in some ways, but also in other ways. And, and this is probably my point of view when it comes to me as a coach in health and wellness, I'm a work in progress and there is not going to be a finish line here. And so I think that's, that's the, the, goal for me with this part of coaching is to help women have aspirations, but not turn those aspirations into another stick to beat ourselves with. So what about you? Nice. Well, you said finish line. Um, and in 2018, I was 50 pounds overweight. And I decided at that point, I'd been that way for quite a while. Um, I couldn't keep doing the same things I was doing and expect to lose the weight, you know. So I shifted gears and made sure I uh, went to a personal trainer twice a week. And she not only trains me, but weighs me. And we talked about food and, and I just had to shift gears and how I ate and recognize that carbs don't do this body good. Not <laughs> <laughs> I know, but they just don't work for me or shit. They sure don't anymore. Um, and shifted to keto and intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. And I did lose the 50 pounds December, 2019. I'll never forget it. Whoa. And then the big transition from career to building a business and then the pandemic. And so I've been, you know, enjoying it very much. Um, enjoy the freedom. Um, but slowly it's the weight has been creeping back up and my discipline around exercise, still training twice a week, but not doing as many runs um, and other things in between uh, hadn't really done as many half marathons. So some of that can be blamed on pandemic, but not all of it. Most of it is just me. I, I shifted gears in so many ways. I shifted that too. So um, when you talked about going into the health and wellness certification, I thought, you know what, all these years, 
I've been in healthcare, but I've not been in clinical practice. And I've always felt a little bit deficient in not having some sort of clinical something. I got my bachelor's degree in public health, actually, um, but then went on to more of the business stuff. And I, I thought to myself, one, would this um, be a good way for me to, for myself, get back on track in terms of health and wellness? Can What can I learn? And then I also have uh, the folks, not just women, but men too, that I'm coaching that are asking or, or saying that, you know, they really need to be more healthy and they need to be more well themselves and not quite sure how. So that started creeping up. Um, but I really just try to think through what is my block in not catching myself when I eat like a truck driver on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do, and I know it. I think it's comfort. I mean, I think it's like we, with all of the stress that we witness um, and that we internalize, um, it, it's our outlet for comfort. And then I think in, comfort is an important thing that we need to have. We need to, we need to pursue comfort. Mm -hmm. um, and yet we, I, I'm going to say I, so we, I really tend to, then it's like comfort up to a point and then it's just like abandoned. Yeah. And, and so that's where it's like for me and, um, and I think for a lot of my, my clients, it's trying to, to find that threshold where seeking comfort and self nurturing turns into abandon yeah. and then shame and regret. And then, you know, that self-flagellation the next day, and then it becomes a cycle. And, and so how do I break that cycle? And this is what my aspiration is for, for myself and for my clients. How do we break that cycle of, um, of withholding, um, measuring ourselves, giving ourselves these um, expectations of what it means to look well and to be fit mm -hmm. um, and healthy, only to then find ourselves so deprived that we then start seeking comfort and it goes to a place of abandon, mm -hmm. um, right? It's a vicious cycle. I've, I've lived in that cycle for many decades. Um, so I think the other thing that I'm hoping to bring to this for myself and for my clients is a little bit of an uh, activist perspective. Mm -hmm. So meaning that I don't want to be healthy and well so that I can fit into this tiny box of what society tells me is acceptable mm -hmm. for women, for, for me to be worthy. I want to help myself and women create aspirational visions of what wellness means to me and what health means to me so that I'm living the, the, fullest life I can live for the, I just heard this average of 4,000 weeks that mm. we humans in this day and age live on the planet. There's a new book that just came out called 4,000 weeks. Okay. Um, so how, what's the healthiest and, and most optimal way that I can show up for myself on the planet for my 4,000 weeks? And as you mentioned, like changing, right. And, and that has to change over time. Mm -hmm. um, and my example for you with that is, you know, uh, you mentioned running half marathons and that's been a big thing in my life too, running marathons, running half marathons and seeing myself as sort of an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, and then the pandemic came and I've spent 18 months, mostly couch surfing 
and watching Schitt's Creek and whatever other source of comfort I could find. Um, and it just, after a while, it just wasn't working. I realized I was embodying that term we've talked about languishing. Uh, yeah. So I just decided to crowbar myself out of the couch and set a crazy goal, which is, as you know, running the Portland Marathon in October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, but I've never gone from zero to 26 before. And so what that has entailed, I'm halfway through um, my training. I did 13 miles last week is redefining what success looks like. So I have measured the um, pace on zero workouts because I know that if I start measuring, I'm going to start criticizing myself. Mm. Yeah. So you measure distance mm. and the days of completing a distance. Yep. I have a paper calendar yeah. with my goal for the week. I've let myself move days around. I've like today I'm supposed to run seven miles. Didn't know that. <laughs> I'm not running seven miles. <laughs> I might run six. <laughs> so it's having, having an aspiration, but the only thing that I'm being rigid about is not criticizing myself and not measuring anything, but how do I feel? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, another thing that um, I've found in the pandemic being with my family all the time and then having my mom move in and being her caregiver is that I have actually forgotten how to be alone. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing like that's a weird wellness goal, right? Like, yeah, you, that's one of my wellness goals. Okay. Learn here it is. Here's my journal. How to go and just be alone with my thoughts, which are not always a great place to be. But if you're not there with them, they're going to be anyway. <laughs> then they're never going to make sense of them if they're just swirling around in there. <laughs> right. No matter how much I ignore them, numb them. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite strategies to numb them. They still come out. They come out in my, like in the middle of the night with crazy, crazy dreams. Like last night where I was being stalked and bitten by <laughs> monkeys. Like for hours. Oh, I was being stalked gosh. by these monkeys that just wanted to bite me. Yeah. What? What? Yeah, they all come out. So anyway, that's what I'm hoping to get out of this coaching niche and for myself and, um, and for clients. And I, I'm going to really pay a lot of attention to um, keeping out those crushing societal judgments and expectations, um, that make us have to be, show up small, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And, and telling us to lose a certain amount of weight or, you know, meditate a certain number of days or whatever whatever that is that then becomes another stick to beat us down for us to beat ourselves with and for society to beat us down with. So, yeah, I, I think that's where we all fall out the way. And I know I do is when I, it's some external expectation. Cause I love to resist. I love to resist. I mean, don't tell me what to do. So the external expectations just immediately set me off on the wrong foot. Even if I can, accomplish something for a period of time. It's not sustained because I can't wait to get to the finish line. I can't wait to hit the mark and then be able to go ride roller coasters again and eat like a truck driver and the freedom of acting like I can be a kid and eat and drink whatever I want, whenever I want. And ugh, just so silly, but that's kind of what happens. 
That's the, the truth, truth, though. You're speaking <laughs> the truth. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's totally the truth. And yes, there's regret the next day. Why did I do that? I knew I shouldn't do that. I knew going in, I didn't want to do that. And yet I did it anyway. Yeah. I mean, these aren't, you know, death issues, but they could be. And, you know, my metric all along has been get back in that normal BMI range. So I too are, am not as much metric focused or pound focused. I I'm like, whatever it takes to get back into the normal BMI range, even if it's just at the very top and stay there. Same. Whatever. Um, and And I believe I have got to really get that in my head as my goal. So my goal may not be completely about eating or exercising um, or meditation. It might be an integration of all of that to, in order to get my mindset to shift to what am I creating? Because I really do well. Um, at creating new things. I love beauty and art. I am very spiritual and believe in the universe, bringing things to us. And, and so rather than focusing on, I don't want to be told what to do. So I want to act like a kid. I need to focus on what am I creating and then getting, you know, a little bit childlike in, you know, wondering, what might things look like underneath all these layers that I've built up so well over the last 18 months? What, you know, what, what could I look like and how light might I feel on my feet? Um, just getting curious about that future state and excited about it and do what I would t- normally do if I were trying to plan a fun event that was creative and engaging and experiential. I need to see this as an experiential creative exercise um, that I'll be proud of someday. I love that you talk about not wanting to be that version of ourselves as kids that is like (laughs) letting our inner glutton just go crazy, but but tapping into a different part of our our child selves Mm -hmm. of being creative and you know, just having kind of a limit, I just hit myself in the (laughs) face, a limitless approach to thinking about beauty and art and, um, creating things, you know, Mm -hmm. I, and I love that part of you. I have to share this. Somebody that I love, uh, sent me this journal (laughs) as part of my wellness, um, venture Zen as Mm -hmm. F word, (laughs) the journal for practicing the mindful art of not giving a Mm -hmm. message. Um, this was my like favorite thing to come home to, by the way. Thank you so much for this. Um, but I have to just read, (laughs) I have to read this one passage to you. I've been using this like almost every day. Okay. Um, be nice to yourself, asshole. (laughs) color these effing flowers and then be nice (laughs) isn't it awesome yeah yeah um i see that your effing flowers aren't colored though no i haven't colored the flowers you're right i need to do that (laughs) i need to wait for a really boring comp like conference call or zoom which is um (laughs) the opposite of what we've been taught by the way in our recent training time to think and I'm just going to surreptitiously color my flowers underneath the camera so nobody knows okay they'll think you're taking notes (laughs) um well here's to another journey and um I'm excited to be in this together just like we were in our last certification and I'm excited for what we can do with the clients that we're going to bring this to me too. I have two starting today okay and, uh, awesome yeah I'm excited good good well let's hold each other accountable let's report out regularly um our successes and our failures yes 
Okay. We're gonna fail forward like a queen. That's also in my Zen. All right, a, we're gonna thanks. fail forward like queens. Yep, cheers to that. Cheers with coffee. All right, see you next week. <laughs>